there's something you should know about tawassul. In too many places in the Holy Quran has Allah emphasized on the concept of the oneness of Allah and how shirk associating others with Allah is a fundamentally forbidden act within the religion of Islam. Ten times a day Muslims recite the verse, thee alone do we serve, thee alone do we ask for help. And yet people every day ask others for help other than Allah. They conform to other than Allah. Their direction in life becomes other than Allah. Every prophet came to destroy these arguments idols to show us that we don't need these creations, the creator is with you. The Holy Quran says, and certainly we created man and we are closer to him than his life vein. You don't need this idol, you don't need this talisman, you don't need this. Use your brain, use your heart, use your soul. Wait just a minute. Doesn't the Holy Quran also say, and had they come to you, i.e. the Holy Prophet, and asked forgiveness of Allah, and the Messenger had also asked forgiveness for them, they would have found Allah oft returning to mercy, merciful. But I thought we were supposed to ask Allah and Allah alone. Hmm. The concept of tawassul means to seek nearness to Allah through a means or a wasila. For example, there's a powerful king. Now you want a bag of gold from this king, but you're a nobody. How are you gonna just walk right up to the king and ask him for something? Peasant. So what do you do? You go to the palace and you ask one of the royal servants to ask the king on your behalf. Because you know that the servant is closer to the king than you are. It's similar to that when it comes to the king of kings, the master of masters, Allah the most high. You can ask those who are close to him to pray for you, knowing that Allah will hear their prayers. Now, does that mean that Allah can't hear your prayers? Nope, not at all. And the Holy Quran says, and surely I am very near. I answer the prayer of the one who prays when he calls upon me. Well then, what's the point of tawassul? Why would we need a wasila when we can just communicate directly with Allah? Tawassul is number one to recognize that Allah is the ultimate source, the one, the originator, the nourisher, and number two, to recognize that everything else is only a wasila through which we can gain closeness to Allah through obedience to him. Allah has commanded in the Holy Quran, seek the means, the wasila of approach to him, to get nearer to him. Tawassul is something that we do all the time without even realizing it. Every time we say, brother, please, can you pray for me? I really want to get married. That's a form of tawassul. Or when you have an exam and you say, mom, please pray for me. You've made your mum into a wasila or a means to ask for Allah's help. Often we do this because we believe that somebody's more pious than us, they've committed less sins, or they've done more good deeds than us. And there are none who have a greater status with Allah than the Holy Prophet, his Ahlul Bayt, and the prophets that came before. In fact, the Holy Quran highlights for us that the will of Allah and the will of the Holy Prophet were both so in think that obeying the Holy Prophet is exactly the same as obeying Allah. It states, whoever obeys the messenger, he indeed obeys Allah. Essentially, if the Holy Prophet commands someone to do something, it is in reality Allah commanding them to do something through the Holy Prophet. Likewise, if you ask the Holy Prophet for something, it is as though you are asking God himself through the Holy Prophet. Like using a phone to call the police because you're being robbed. You're using the phone's help to reach the police. Similarly, when you visit the doctor because you're sick, you know that ultimately your well-being is in the hands of Allah and you recognize that the doctor is merely a channel Allah has created through which you can regain your health. And the same goes for the Ahlul Bayt, those pious companions and those who have proximity to Allah. Got it? Good. Question, then why go to the shrine and sit by the graves of such personalities? Surely this is shirk and asking other than Allah. You're not asking the Holy Prophet or the Ahlul Bayt. You're talking to a grave, a stone made by your own hands. After all, they're dead. Or are they? The Holy Quran states, think not of those who are slain in the way of Allah as dead. Nay, they are alive. They may have passed away from this material realm, but they're more alive than you and I. Wait, 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 wait. But that's exactly the kind of thing that some of the mushrikeen, the polytheists, say. They say that they aren't literally worshipping these idols, they're taking them as guardians and a means to reach the one God. After all, the Holy Quran states, Now surely sincere obedience is due to Allah alone. And those who take guardians besides him say, uh -huh, we, we only serve them in order that they may take us closer to Allah. Surely Allah does not guide him aright who is a liar, ungrateful. Surely this whole wasila business is just that, 
praying to the dead or living with the false pretense of gaining closeness to Allah, exactly as the mushrikeen did. Huh, good point. Maybe we're not supposed to take a wasila. Maybe we're supposed to recognize how close Allah is to us and build a personal relationship with him. And to an extent, that's true. But then why does the Holy Quran also say, seek the means or wasila to approach him? Is there a contradiction here? In order to understand this, we have to look at the Quran in its entirety and not single out any of its verses. There is a type of wasila or means which is forbidden in the religion of Islam and there is a type of wasila which is obligatory. The Holy Quran tells us that the brothers of Yusuf went to their father and said, Father, ask God to forgive our sins, we have certainly sinned. And that he, a prophet of God, replied, I will ask for your forgiveness from my Lord, firmly establishing that we can take profit as a wasila. Furthermore, the Holy Quran tells us that the Prophet Musa saw a fire and that when he came to it, a voice was uttered in the blessed spot of the bush saying, O Musa, surely I am Allah, the Lord of the worlds. This is a prophet of God, somebody who's blessed with the direct communication with Allah. Why then did he need to approach a burning bush, a material object, in order for Allah to speak to him? Was Prophet Musa worshipping the fire? God no! Allah is so great, so omnipotent, so overwhelmingly Allah-ish that everything you use to gain closeness to him is a wasila. Everything. No, 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 I don't want any of this wasila stuff, okay? I'll use my own brain to communicate with Allah. Uh, brother, your brain is nothing but a fleshy grey matter enclosed within your skull. <laughs> it's an object. I'll use my own heart. I'll use my heart to communicate with Allah. <laughs> brother, your heart is nothing but a vital organ used to pump blood around your body. And even if you look at the metaphorical meaning of the heart, it's still nothing but a means. It's a wasila. But the, the best wasila is my prayer mat, my prayer bead, and my Quran. I'll use those things, you know. Please. These are all just means. They're all just wasilas. Your eyes, a wasila to see the wonders created by Allah. Your feet, a wasila to walk towards worship. Your voice, your sweat, your blood, it's all a wasila. <laughs> you have absolutely no way of communicating with Allah, understanding Allah, recognizing Allah, except through various physical, material objects and phenomena, i.e. wasilas. Well then, if everything is a means to potentially get closer to Allah, then what's the big deal? Idols aren't so bad then, are they? After all, everything is ultimately leading to Allah. It's all good, right? Wrong! The correct wasila, the correct means, is that which Allah and the Holy Prophet have outlined for us in the Quran and the Hadith. There are certain wasilas which are halal, and there are certain wasilas which are haram. You can't just get drunk and say, I am getting so wasted for the sake of Allah right now. You can't just get high and say, Oh God, I am getting so close to you right now. No! Haram is haram. And shirk is precisely that. To take our own desires and place them above the commandments of Allah. The Holy Quran says, Have you seen the one who has chosen his desires as his Lord? Disgusting. And that's exactly what the polytheists, the mushrikeen, do. Instead of obeying Allah, they obey what they want to obey. They put their own desires, their own thoughts, their own ideas of what they think their way of life should be above the decrees of Allah. Allah is close to us. We have a direct connection to him, just as all things in creation have a direct connection to him. We must obey him and seek nearness to him through the pure means that he has prescribed. And the Holy Prophet, his Ahlul Bayt, and those close to Allah are the gates to Allah's mercy. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. You never know, you might become the wasila between somebody and Allah's guidance.